Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners, proudly brought to you by One Eek One. We go back to Albion Park on Saturday night. Eight race program, so a little bit different compared to normal for a Saturday night, but it coincides with the big night coming through from Sydney, and there's a lot of Queensland representation down there for that big meeting at Menangle. None more so than the state's best pace, a leap to fame, who is the favourite for the world's richest race, the Tab Eureka. So a lot to look forward to. This is going to be a good card at Albion Park. Plenty of depth right across the meeting. And we've got a couple of good drivers with good books as well about to join us. Leonard Kane and Adam Richardson. Leonard Kane now jumps in the hot seat to go through his book of drives on Saturday night. We've got eight races and coming off a rare Saturday night off last weekend, Leonard's now with us. Leonard, appreciate the time. No worries at all, Chris. Thank you. OK, you're fresh and firing for Saturday night. We start with race one, number two, Go Lightly. His numerical form doesn't read all that great, but he is going better than what those numbers suggest. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, um, you know, he's racing a lot better than what it looks on paper. Uh, he just hadn't had a lot of draw, a lot of luck, sorry, and, um, you know, bad draws. So, um, you know, he comes out with a little bit more favourable draw there on Saturday where hopefully we can settle close. And um, if that's the case, you know, at his best, I think he's, he's good enough to be right in the mix there. OK, so he's running from gate two, but you've got... Melton Beach drawn to your inside, who does have early speed. And you've got a Rocksaw Diamonds, a very fast beginner, on your immediate outside. So going into this first turn, uh, where would the ideal spot be for Go Lightly? Uh, obviously, you know, he loves the fence and he loves to be forward. So, um, you know, <laughs> best case scenario, you'd love to be in front. Um, like you say, Melton Beach has good early speed. He is first up in a while, so... Um, you know, we'll just have to press the button early and see where we get to and, um, you know, see what Pete's sort of thinking and, um, you know, take it from there. But like I say, he loves the fence and he loves to be forward. So, um, you know, if we were able to do that on Saturday night, you know, it'd be very hard to run down. OK, it's not a bad race, this one. There's a bit of depth here and there's a bit of speed further out off that front line. The Grogfather can go forward. You know him well. Surf Ace is a go-forward type. Holy Cam Dillon even speak with Sam. So they might be burning along here early. Yeah, definitely. You know, it looks like a race that's going to generate a lot of early tempo. So, um, you know, like I say, we got the draw, so we're going to have to make use of it and, and just uh, hope for the best there early, I think. OK. Race two, your old mate Obi Legal lines up here. I say old mate, he's only a four-year-old. Uh, he was unplaced last week. You didn't drive him last week, but his form overall is very consistent. It's a horrible draw, but can he still feature here? Oh, for sure, you know. Um, I'd have to say he's one of my favourite horses, you know, that I'm driving at the moment. You know, he's very consistent. He's very versatile. Um, you know, he's got a great, great um, few hundred metre sprint late, you know. So, like you say, it's, it's a tough field and it's a bad draw. But his run last week, um, you know, that went quick and it was a blistering last half and he was off the track. So, um, I think we write that run off and, and, you know, obviously the draw doesn't help us this week, but we just look for gaps early and um, sort of hopefully if we can slot in there somewhere midfield and have a good trip, I think he'll be blistering late again. So, um, you know, he, he's definitely, it's hard to ever reel him out really because he, he like you say, he is so consistent. So yeah. um, no, he's a good horse to drive. All right. So you, you, you're wanting and needing a genuine tempo here. And that might play out because, as you said, it's a deep lineup here. Big Shadow, super impressive last week. Last time Joe looked good. Got to go milking was huge in defeat. Bosch is racing well. Amami's flying. Artie's flash is the key runner. He's fresh up since the carnival. So it's a loaded field. So they might just produce a bit of tempo. Oh, definitely, you know, um, and, and that's sort of what we're going to be hoping for. Um, hopefully they go mad, and, and the madder they go, the better it'll be for us. So um, that's all we can hope for, I think, here. All right, well, that's OB Legal. Let's go across to race five. Ailson does your drive here. First time sitting behind this mare? Yeah, it is, yeah. First time sitting behind her. So, um, you know, probably a little bit of a sticky draw. Um, and she's probably a touch out of form, so... Uh, you know, as far as the depth of the race goes, it's probably a touch of a drop back for her, I think. Um, you know, I think at her best, she should be featuring in that. But like I say, she's probably a little bit down on confidence at the moment. So we're going to have to rely on a little bit of luck, I think. OK. She's only a recent addition to the stables of Shane Graham. The first up run was OK, certainly a pass mark. 
but last time out probably just a, a, a smidgen disappointing yeah I think so Chris um, you know I think that's the best way to put it uh, like you say her first run you know she um, she did everything right and it was a bit of a learning curve and um, whatnot but last run was probably a little bit of a letdown I think so um, we'd want an improvement off that all right a couple of weeks between runs that may help her but it is a tough draw there for Ailson drawn the outside of the second row Speaking of uh, draws, here's a good one for you in race six. Not the Kingswood. He lines up from barrier one. He's going well. He was unplaced last time out, but there was nothing wrong with the run. Do you rate him here? Yeah, definitely. You know, this looks like a good race for him. And um, drawing where he is is obviously always beneficial. Um, he's, he's racing good. And um, I think if we can sort of get away as best we can early and, and be right up there, I think um, he'll he'll take some running down in this race too. You know, it looks a good race for him, I think, on paper. Okay, so you might have a big uh, decision to make here because there's plenty of uh, likely types to your outside here that'll go forward and probably have a look. So if you're to hand over, you've got the choice here between, what, betting origin, my ultimate Levi, Datitude, Frankie Ferocious? Yeah, it's sort of... Um yeah, it's, it's going to be one of them things. I think you're just going to have to look across at the start and sort of see who's there, whatever the best one is that's there first. I think, um, you know, if you're looking to take cover, I think um, obviously just the best one that's there, you, you know, the quickest, I think. OK. Or is he good enough to go all the way in this field? Look, I think he is. You know, I obviously um, haven't really got to speak to Pete and Patrice about it yet, but, um, you know, this is my first time driving him, I believe. So... I don't know a great lot about him. I'll have to look a little bit more into it. But um, I think he is good enough to take them all the way in this. But, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously see what they want to do. OK, good chance there with not the Kingswood. Race 7, you know this guy inside out, rock bottom. You've uh, driven him uh, many, many times. He lines up in the uh, the free-for-all here. It's a good quality lineup, as you would expect. Future Assured was absolutely awesome last week. Can rock bottom show up here? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, he's another consistent type who, um, you know, I love sitting behind because you always know what you're going to get with him. You know, um, he always gives you his all and he follows speed good and he's also got a good sprint, you know. Um, so I think, you know, in these races, we generally just drive for a little bit of luck and I think that's all you can do here and, um, you know, hope luck comes our way. And if it is too, then, you know, he'll be right there at the finish for sure. You know, he's... Um, He's always, he always gives you his best, so that's a positive thing. OK, a couple of things were with rock bottom in this race. The small field is going to suit, and the fact you're drawn three and you've got speed to your inside with high voltage and send it means you don't have to use him early, so he's going to land a pretty handy spot here. Yeah, definitely. You know, that's all going to play into our hands, I think, and um, if we can just be camped on him and um, just be looking for them gaps late, I think that's his best hope. Did you catch the replay of Future Assured? I did, yeah. I actually watched that one, and, um, you yeah, know, he was, he was huge. You know, that was a massive run. Right. The last race on Saturday night, my Alderman Victor again for Peter Gregg and Patrice Madden, running from gate two, and he's going well. He is going well, you know. Um, he's run there on Saturday night. He, he, he got a good trip, you know. Adam Sanderson produced a good one there. So um, he had a good trip, but he was also um, he was also right there in the finish and, and doing his best work late, which is sort of his go, you know. So I think if we can get a cosy trip in this um, and be not too far away, He's definitely, um, his last 200 is definitely his biggest asset, I think. OK. He did get a good trip last week, but in your opinion, should he have been able to put that field away with that sort of trip? Um, to a certain extent, yes. Um, but at the same time, you know, I was speaking to Adam there on Tuesday and he sort of said if he had driven him before, he probably would have come to the outside earlier and let him wind up. Um, and, he, and he probably does get there, but it's one of them things where um, you got a decision to make and... And at the same time, you know, he was held up that little bit and maybe that just cost him. I'm not too sure, but um, he probably should have been a touch sharper, I thought, yeah. OK. So drawn gate two, you're just going to try and hold a spot here and just stay nice and handy? Yeah, I think so. That looks the best hope. I think just get away um, get away quick and hold, a, hold us forward a position as what we can and, and try and use him for that last couple hundred. All right. Some good drives there for you on Saturday night. Which one are you most looking forward to at this early stage? I uh, think old rock bottom. He's, um, you know, he's an old favourite of mine, and um, hopefully, like a, like we said there, if he can get a good trip, hopefully he's featuring there late. Okay, so rock bottom in race seven, uh, number three. Your drive that you're most looking forward. To. Al Wycross will be upset. <laughs> he would have been hoping you would have said Obi Legal or my ultimate Victor. <laughs> it's, it's hard from the draw with Obi, I think, but um, yeah, no, he'll be doing his best. Hey, appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside Saturday night. No worries. Thanks very much, Chris.
Adam Richardson now joins us to go through his book of drives on Saturday night. And there's some nice drives as well. Adam, appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, we start with race two. I'm sure you're happy with this horse, Bosch. You've been with him his last two. He's now in the care of Mark Reese, And both of those runs have been good. However, it's a bit of a sticky draw and it's a strong field on Saturday night. Yeah, it is. Both his runs so far have been over the mile. Um, both been strong runs, hitting the line nice. Over the 21, I think, um, you know, probably drive him quiet and maybe put him into the race a little bit earlier than I have been. He felt last week like he was sort of one pace the last half. So um, might try and put him into it a bit late, a bit earlier than over the 21 and see if he can tough it out. OK. Uh, th this race is surely going to generate some tempo because it's such a deep race. Big Shadow was impressive last time. Joe impressive last week. Got to go milking went well. Amami Yardi's flash. King of Trump's going really well. So this should ensure a good speed? I'm sure it will, yeah. Um, like you say, there's a handful of horses there that are, you know, in top form at the moment. And hopefully there is a lot of speed early and um, our fella, like I said, can just tough it out. OK. So you prefer him at the 2100 compared to the mile? Um, I haven't driven him over the 21, but to me, he just feels like he's a bit more strong than what he is zippy. OK. He's a pretty handy type, so I think it's only going to be a matter of time before he wins again at Albion Park. I think so, yeah. Like, Mark hasn't had him all that long, and um, the two runs that he has had have, have been pretty good. OK. Well, that's Bosch in race number two. Looks a good chance there. Just needs that little bit of luck from the draw. Race number three. This is a good drive you've picked up here. Jendon Strike. She's a last start winner in a tick over 52. Yes, yeah, she's got the wide draw, but uh, I think you'd be pretty happy to sit behind this mare. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, obviously, a couple of the bigger drivers are heading south for the Eureka. Um, it looks, you know, a, a very winnable race. She's Last mile was good last week. You know, she drew outside last week as well. So it would just be a matter of driving quiet and, you know, hopefully she can get over the top. Yeah. She's a versatile mare, so y you've got options from seven. If you want to go forward, you can. But if you're looking to, to grab up and go back, you've got that option as well. So you can go in with a really open mind with this mare. That's for sure, yeah. Like, um, I haven't spoke to Chris about it yet, but there looks to be a bit of depth, you know, in the race. So we'll just see what he thinks about it. OK. Uh, at this stage, better than a rocket draws one. And then you've got our action man, Auntie Bella, the stable mate of Jendon Strike, drawn to your inside. They probably look the hardest to beat. You would think so, yeah. All right. Well, that's Jendon Strike in race number three. Let's go across to race four. Gwyneth P. Darren Clayton, he, he keeps telling me each and every week, this mare's got the hoof right on the till. Would you agree with that? I would for sure. Um, last time I drove her, she had no luck at all. Um, got out late and hit the line nice. Um, you know, only being one off the second row here, I think she can just tuck away early and hopefully she's got the speed to come over the top, you okay. know. Okay, well, what would be the ideal sort of situation for her? Just being on the pegs, doing no work and then just getting that closing shot? Yeah, I think so. Um, she's a very zippy little mare, so, you know, she's probably got a real good two, 300 metre sprint on her. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can just work into it nice and, like I say, get home over the top. Okay, tell me if you agree with this. With Magical Mayer in this field and drawn wide, She's going to make sure there's some tempo in this race at some stage. Trent Dawson likes to drive her tough. So that's a good thing for you? I think so, yeah. You know, like um, the harder they go, probably the better for us. All right. Well, that's Gwyneth P. We'll keep following her. Darren Clayton says each and every week she's ready to go. So it might be this week. Hopefully. What about in race five? Tell me about Glenlee Hanover. First start here at Albion Park. She comes up with gate two and she's won a pass two. What do you know about her? Um, yeah, so she's a mare from down home, um, obviously winner of the last two. Probably likes to be driven hard and on, up on the pace, you know, she's a good leader. Um, and from all reports, she's, you know, come up and settled in really well. So, um, you know, hoping for a forward showing. OK. Have you raced against her previously when you were down south? Uh, I reckon early on, yeah, I did, yeah. All right. So with gate two, she's going to be in a good spot. Uh, whatever she does on Saturday night, keep following? I'd think so, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Mademoiselle Jujon and Arco probably look the hardest to beat there with their nice front row draws. Mm -hmm. What about in race six, Frankie Ferocious? A good drive to get here. Yeah, another one. Um, obviously, like I said, Nathan's going south. Um, I sat behind him in a trial here, you know, probably a month, six weeks ago, and gave me a real nice feel. Um, just over-raced a little bit, and I sort of pulled him out and just let him run home. But he's been going pretty good. Um, you know, connections seem pretty happy with him, so I'd say it's a very winnable race for him too. OK, I remember that trial. Now, uh, that was one of those Monday sessions. He can hang on a bit, can't he? he yeah, definitely. <laughs> I um, spoke to him after that and they changed a bit of gear and apparently he's been well since, so... OK.
Okay. Did you watch him last week, finishing fourth in that strong three-year-old race? That was the race free thinker one. What did you make of that effort? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a good effort. Um, you know, obviously this week's a, quite a drop in grade from what that race was. Um, and I haven't spoke to Ben or anyone yet, but I presume they'll want to press forward and, you know, give him every chance. Okay, he's capable of going really fast time for a mile, isn't he? He is, yeah. Okay. Well, there's some good drives there for you on Saturday night. Which one at this early stage are you most looking forward to? Uh, I'd probably have to say Frankie Ferocious. All right, race six, number six, Frankie Ferocious. Nice and easy there. Hey, Adam, really appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside on Saturday night. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Big thanks to both Leonard and Adam giving up their time and insights ahead of their drives on Saturday night. And we wish them all the very best of luck. Looking for a good thing on Saturday night? I didn't find it easy. In fact, it was quite difficult. But we've got to be patient. We've got to wait till the very last race of the night. So this will wrap up the main tab quaddy as well. Race eight, number one, can't bluff you. He's got the right draw. I think he's got the right race and he can take it. So race eight, number one, can't bluff you, marking him the good thing on Saturday night. But as I said at the start, don't forget about all that Queensland representation at Menangle. We've got Leap to Fame, Speak the Truth in the big one, the Eureka. Tim's a trooper steps out in the uh, the Consolation, the Stockade, along with Sure Thing Captain, the Queensland-owned Danger Zone also going around. A lot of Queensland representation. And don't forget in the Tab Lynn Smith Mile, we've got Hot and Treacherous starting. And uh, off that sparkling trial recently in super fast time, I'm sure he'll run a ripper for Jack and Tara Butler and our leading driver, Nathan Dawson. Plenty to look forward to on Saturday night. We'll see you trackside at the creek.